God is love. I, I, I believe in freedom and the perfect love. I know about who we truly are, truly the son and daughter of God. Because you are called to freedom. Jesus paid a price for your freedom. So why shouldn't you have it? He died for your freedom. So why shouldn't you have it? It's to have a relationship with us. Welcome back to this uh, web seminar that I called our Freedom Seminar. And this seminar is really about, about our freedom, our freedom in Christ. And in Galatians 5.1 it says that uh, for freedom Christ has set us free. And he has set us free because he wants us to have freedom, because he wants us to have joy, to have peace and all of these things. He, he, want us to, he, want us, he wants the best for us and, and he really wants us to have, have the freedom that, uh, that actually Christ paid for. Yeah, you know, Christ paid a high price. Jesus paid a, paid a high price for us. And, and, he, and he, he, he paid a high price for our freedom. Not only our freedom when we come to heaven, that we can get a ticket to heaven, but actually also our freedom down here on this earth. And there is many Christians who believe that Christianity is all about getting a ticket to heaven. So I don't go get to hell, but I, I can get to heaven. So I have an eternal life in heaven. But that is, not, um, that is just a small part of the good news. <laughs> uh, it's actually, the good news is so much better than that. And it's actually about that we actually still can enjoy life here on earth too. It says in, in, uh, Jesus said in, uh, in John 10.10 10, that uh, the thief comes only to steal, kill and destroy, but I have come that you might have life and have it in abundance until it overflows. <laughs> And, and that's the abundance life that God has for us. That's the freedom life that God has for us. He has freedom, freedom life for us. His, his, his life and his, his desire for our lives is, is freedom. It's not bondage. It's not that we should be in bondage in any way, but that, that we should be free. And in this teaching, I, I've been in trying to give you, uh, give you some, some keys and, and, and some, some things that can help you to, to be free. Maybe you are stuck. Maybe you are stuck in your sin problem, or you, you, you don't see the freedom that Christ has set you free from, or what is God Christ has set you free from, that He has set you free from sin, for instance. Uh, you, you maybe don't see it. And I said before in this teaching that a Christian don't need more rules or regulations or, or try to do things more or try to be more holy and things like that. It's actually not about that. It's actually about revelation. And out from our revelation of who we are, who God is, and who we are in Him, out from that, we will, we, will, uh, we will also do things. We will do good things. We will not sin when we see those things. And we will do His will also when we, when, when we see those things. So, um, uh, but last, uh, last, last time we were talking about uh, uh, that we are, we are, we are not uh, too, or the last session, uh, we, we didn't talk about this. It's the third session, by the way, in, in day two of this teaching, or it, it's actually the third part of, of a series that they also called uh, ident uh, "What is your true identity? What is your true identity in Christ?" And um, and uh, and Dr. Jekyll or Hyde Christian, I also called it. So this is the third part of this too. But uh, but um, so so. But last time I was talking about that a Christian doesn't does or the question was, does a Christian have two nature natures? And, and uh, my conclusion was that we, we don't have that. <laughs> the old nature was crucified. I am a new creature. creature. I have a new nature. And the old is gone, the, old, the, the new has come. So, so, uh, so that's, that's the kind of the conclusion I had on the last session on this teaching. Uh, but, um, but we're also talking a little bit about what flesh is. What, what is flesh? I'm ending that. What the, what the, you know, the flesh can mean different things. It can be mean your physical body, or it can mean, mean the chicken that you ate for dinner, or, or it, it can actually also be a way of thinking or acting as if God don't exist. So, so that's another also a conclusion on that. And, uh, and it, it's kind of a way that the old sinful nature was programmed too. It was programmed, the old sinful nature was programmed with this program that God didn't exist. So you need to try to do things on your own. 
So, so it's kind of trying to do things on your own apart from God. That's also the definition of flesh. And that's, that's when you read Romans 6, 7, and, uh, and also Galatians 5, this is the kind of definition that, that that's, is, is there. And, and sometimes you find it's the same word sarks. The sarks can have different meanings. Uh, in, in, uh, sometimes when, when he is talking about flesh, it's, it's not only, it doesn't always mean evil. You need to see, look at the context. For instance, in Galatians uh, 2.20, 2 it says the, says that the life I now live in the flesh. It doesn't say, say in, in, in the life I now live in my sinful body or, or something like that, or sinful something. But that, that there is actually just meaning the flesh, the physical, physical human being or the physical, in my physical um, body. <laughs> so, so, uh, so sometimes it means that, and, but sometimes it's, it's mean this, this way of thinking or acting if, uh, as if God isn't, does not exti uh, exist. Uh, like he, he, he's not there. Um, and this is the way that the old sinful nature was thinking, the old flesh, the old sinful nature was thinking, and that uh, God does not exist. He, he, he didn't, uh, it is all, all about you, all about you trying to do something, or it's all about you. It's not about God. It's, 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 it's like thinking is God, if not uh, acting and thinking if God does not exist. So, um, but but sometimes we re, re, we 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 read, uh, uh, for instance, in in, uh, in Romans seven and also in Galatians five, where, where we, it, it kind of seems like like we have this this battle, this battle between the spirit and the flesh. And um, and then does it say there in a way in in in, in both in chapter seven and also in chapter five? Doesn't it say that we are kind of the flesh and, and in my flesh there is nothing good and and things like that and and. Um, and, and, uh, and it doesn't say that we be fighting this fight. So again, well, what's important? What is important to, is to read Romans and also Galatians in its context, and that, that's very important, especially to read six, uh, six all through eight um, in Romans and also the whole chapter of Galatians five. And both Romans and Galatians is about this thing that we are free from the law, that we are no, no longer are under the law. Some some Jews that had, had become uh, believers of Jesus, a follower of Jesus, they thought that they still had to keep some commandments before kind of God fully accepted them. They kind of mixed grace with law, grace with law in a way. Uh, and they also told the, the Gentile Christians in the Church of Galatia to, that that they also have to be be kind of uh, to put these laws on them, the, the laws of even the laws of kind of uh, circumcise and, and things like that and and to be kind of good Christians or righteous and stuff like that. And then I also have to keep and keep these commandments and be circumcised and be like, like the Jews or something like that. But Paul stresses that we are not long, longer under the law, but we are under grace. So, so this is kind of the, the, the foundation for, for what Paul is saying, both in the letter to Galatians, but also in, in the, in, to the church in Rome. Uh, but we can read read some verses here from Galatians, uh, Galatians 5, 1, and also um, 13 to 25. This is the main scripture for my for my, my teaching, actually. Uh, in some translation, in uh, uh, I think it's uh, American Standard Version, it says uh, um, uh, it says something that um, uh, for freedom has Christ set us free. It says that stand fa fast, therefore, in the liberty which Christ has made us free. For freedom, Christ has set us free, uh, and do not en and be entangled again in again with a joke, with a, with a yoke, not a joke, but <laughs> but yoke of bondage. For brothers, uh, and then we, then we jump down to verse 13. For brothers, you were not called; you were called to liberty. You were called to freedom. You were called to freedom. This is what you are called to. Don't use your liberty. Only do not use the liberty for an opening for the flesh, for that, that old way of thinking. But by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in, fulfilled in one word, even in this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed and, and that you are not circum, circum, uh, consumed by one another. I say, I say then, Walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of, of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. Lest whatever you may will, these things th that you do. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under law. 
Now that the works of the flesh are certainly revealed, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lustfulness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, fightings, jealousy, anger, ri rivals, rivalries, di uh, divisions, heresies, envying, murders, drunkenness, revilings, and things like this, of which I tell you before, as I also said before, that they who who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faith, meekness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And sometimes we stop there, but it's very important to get these last two verses here too. Uh, it says that, But those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh, has already crucified the flesh with his passion and lust. If we, be, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. And, and we live in the Spirit, we are in the Spirit. Um, and because we are in the Spirit, as a Christian we are in the Spirit, then we also need to choose to walk by the Spirit. We can still choose to walk by the flesh. And he, he's kind of talking about here in all, this, all this, 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 this thing of the flesh. Um, and, but he's actually saying, this is not you anymore. Because as a Christian, if you are in Christ, if you belong to Christ, you have already crucified the flesh. Uh, you know, the, 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 the spirit, the whole Holy Spirit and the flesh is, 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 is two opposites. As I said, the spirit is talking about God. You know, it, it's, it's all about God. It's, 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 it's about God. But the flesh is, is about a way of thinking uh, or acting like if God does not exist, like the Holy Spirit is not existing. So those two cannot live together. <laughs> the spirit and the flesh it doesn't, it doesn't live together. But the spirit is not, the Holy Spirit is not you. And it's not talking about your human spirit here. It's talking about the Holy Spirit. And, and, but the flesh is not truly you either any longer. So, so it's, it's treating it's you, it's the Holy Spirit and the flesh. Uh, but we need, we need to be led by the Spirit, not by the old flesh any longer. We need to, to, to stop, stop thinking like the old flesh did. The old flesh is you, but you, you have to stop thinking like it. Uh, so so you, need, you, need, you, need, you have to stop walking as as if you lived in that flesh. But you need to start to walk by the Spirit, who you are in the Spirit. And, and uh, I believe this is what, what actually Paul is wanting to tell us. Uh, because because why, why should he read in verse 24 uh, here that those who, have, those who belong to Christ have crucified their flesh with his passion and lust. So it has already, it's a past tense, we have already done that. But sometimes we, we, we choose not to walk by it. <laughs> As a Christian, you can still choose to not walk by the Spirit. But you are in the Spirit. You are in Christ all the time. You don't fall out of in of Christ. But you are in Christ all the time. And because you are in Christ, you can also walk. Uh, and because you are in Christ, then, then also start to walk like that. <laughs> that that's, the, that's, the, that's the thing that the, the Paul actually trying to tell us all through, through the Galatians and, and also through Romans and uh, also Corinthians. And uh, he's, he's, he's trying to tell them, you know, you are like this. You are holy. You are righteous. You are God's beloved. You, you are in, in Colossians too. He's talking about you are beloved. You are the God's chosen one. You are God's, God's beloved. And so, um, and, and, and so put off. Put off those things that you did before. Because that is not you any longer. <laughs> so put it off. Because that is not your true nature. That is not tr the true you. So put it off. Don't do them any longer. And that's, that's the thing that Paul is trying to say all the time. All, all through Romans, uh, Colossians, uh, Galatians, uh, and, 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 and probably more also, <laughs> and Ephesians too. And, uh, and this is, this is this, I, I hope you see this. I didn't see this before. I didn't see it like that before. I, I was afraid when I read this, this, this scripture before because I was afraid that I, 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 I was, in, uh, was in, the, in the flesh all the time. So if I was in the flesh, I, I, was, I was not, uh, uh, it says in verse 20, um, 21 here that the, those, those, uh, they that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And I was afraid of this verse because I'm thinking I, I'm like that, you know, I'm, I'm probably sometimes I am in, I'm, I'm sometimes I do these things. Uh, maybe not so many of them, but, but I still I do maybe some, maybe I'm envying, sometimes I can envy. Something I can take parties with with some people, and I can I can start to accuse other people or, or uh, uh, revival re, re, revivalries <laughs> revivalries. I can do things like that. I can be angry. I can uh, and so on. 
and jealousy and things like that. Um, and 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 uh, and because I have these those things, maybe maybe because I did those things, maybe I'm I'm not a Christian anymore. Maybe I lost my salvation. Maybe uh, God is uh, because the God says the, or the, it says there that, that I shall not inherit the kingdom of God if I, if I do those things. And I, I was thinking like that. That that is this most talking about that. And when I read verse 24, I, I was thinking, but those who have belonged to Christ must crucify the flesh. They have to, they have to crucify the flesh. They, will, they have to try to crucify the, fry the flesh with his passion and his lust. But this is actually not what it's saying. If, if that, that, that way of thinking was true about you, that uh, it, says, it says that those who habitually do those things, they, they shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But you are not those things anymore. You can still choose to do them, but that is not you anymore. Because you, have, you as a new believer, you, you who are in Christ, you, you live in the Spirit, you are in the Spirit. Uh, do you, do, do you, you that belongs to Christ, you have already crucified the flesh with its passion and its lust. I hope you see it. Can, can you see this? Are you able to see it? So if, if you walk after the way of the kingdom of darkness is thinking, if you're walking uh, like the flesh, in, in walking according to the flesh, and you do not see who you really are in Christ, and the freedom that he has for you, that he has purchased for you, and, and he has called you to live in. And, and, and also, the, you know, in Galatians here too, he, he's talking about that, for Christ has set you free. Don't, don't use your freedom also to, to make an excuse for, for your, the way that you lived before, so you just can go back into sin and, and live the way that you lived before in the flesh. Don't, don't, don't go back to that, that life, <laughs> because that is not you anymore. You have a call to freedom. You are free. So why should you go back to that, that, that Lucy, that, that, uh, that way of living, to be slave under sin again? Why should you do that? Why should you be entangled into that sin thing again when you are set free, when, when God, Christ has already set you free? So, so we, we need to see that. And, uh, so, so we need to see the, the freedom that God has, has called us to. And there was one scripture too that uh, that I'm struggling with when I, uh, and, uh, and it's very very important to see how how Paul is 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 is, is saying this. And I know translation some translation can can mess things up a little bit sometimes. But but Paul is using a lot of uh, uh, a lot of this this uh, this this phrase uh, this saying that uh, in the Spirit in in Christ we are in Christ, and he he's mentioning that many times. And in the in the flesh and in the in Christ and walking according to the flesh and according to the spirit. So what what I will say is that a Christian, he is not longer in the flesh. He is not longer in or in his sinful nature or in the flesh or or what you want to call it, but in his old nature. But he can walk according to it. You can he, he can walk like this this old sinful nature is still alive, but he is not in it any longer. Uh, I, I will show you some scripture here from Romans 7, or Romans 8, I mean. It says that those who are in, in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. In fact, the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who, who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. This was another verse I was scared of when I, when I read it. I didn't understand it. And it says that those who are in the flesh cannot please God, and and I felt many times, or most of the times, maybe, uh, maybe even I didn't, as I mentioned in the, in the beginning yesterday, uh, that I, I probably don't not done the, all of the big sins or a lot of big sins in my life, you know, but I, I still I still felt that I walked in the flesh, <laughs> and many times, and that I, I, that I was in the flesh, and uh, I felt I felt I, I I was that, so so I was thinking then I cannot please God. Because I now, now I've walked in the flesh, now I've been in the flesh, and, and uh, for, for those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So, so every time I, I do, do a sin, I'm, I'm in the flesh and I'm not pleasing to God. I'm not, God is not pleased with me, uh, and things like that. But, but if this was true, if this is true, then, then you, you run into another problem in verse 9. And, and some Christians have been afraid of this. They are afraid that they are, if they are in the flesh, they have lost their salvation. And 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 uh, and many believes that that actually when every time you sin you kind of 
you, and walking in the spirit, you are you kind of lose your salvation. And it's actually someone who teaches that too, but not so many anymore, maybe. But but there are still maybe some people that are, that are afraid of that, and then they take Romans eight here, and then they're thinking Romans eight is talking about those things. But but you know, Romans eight is actually good news. It's all about good news. The bad news was in Romans seven actually, or the, the or the, the not the bad news, but it it was the problem was in Romans seven. But but in Romans eight, eight he give, gives a solution to Romans seven. But uh, so 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 sometimes we really just take this verse out of the, it context and, and and read this: "Those who are in the flesh cannot please God." So not do um, be, be careful. Don't be in the flesh. You don't walk in the flesh, or don't do be in the flesh. You need to to, to be in the spirit all the time, and and you need to do this to to be in the spirit and do to be in. So so you are pleasing to God. So you need to do. You need to do something to 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 promote in a way promote. Uh, I'm speaking Norwegian here, uh, but but um, those who, that those who are in the, so, so you should not do, be in the flesh. You don't be in the flesh, it's because then you cannot please God, and and sometimes we are read this this scripture like this. But it get get worse. If this is true, then it get worse in the next verse here. Because you, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. In fact, the spirit of God dwells in you. And then it says, anyone who does not have the spirit of God does not belong to him. So, um, so it means that if you are in the flesh, you don't belong to God. If you are in the flesh, still in the flesh. You do not do not belong to God. It's not what it's actually saying in a way. Because it's saying you, however, are not in the flesh, but you are in the spirit. He says those who have, have received Jesus, they are not longer in the flesh, but they are in the spirit. In fact, the spirit of, the spirit of God dwells in you. He says that it says that we are already, we who belongs to God, we already are in the Spirit. We are already are in Christ. We are in Christ, we are in the Spirit. So, so we, that's, that's why we, we all the time actually are pleased to God. God is pleased with us, actually. He's not pleased with what you do. I'm not saying that He's pleased with what you do. And He's not pleased when we walk according to the flesh. But it is important to see that we are not in the flesh any longer. We, 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 are not, we, we have been dead to the flesh. We have been crucified uh, with, this thing, with this old way of thinking, this old way of acting and stuff. We have been crucified to those things. And so we are not in the flesh any longer, but we are in the spirit. Because if you didn't have the spirit, you didn't belong to God, but you belong to God. And, you, and then further on, he's, he's talking about that God has given us the spirit of our adoptions that, that cry out, Abba, Father, that we are, we are his sons and daughters. So uh, so um, so you are his son and you are his daughter, and uh, and you are in the spirit. He wants to establish you. He wants to tell the the, the Romans that, that you know who they are, who they are, who they truly are now. That they are sons and daughters of God. That they have a spirit on the inside of them that cries out, "Abba, Father," and that's their true identity. They, they, they are the sons of daughters of God. They are in the flesh, in the, not in the flesh any longer. They are in the spirit. And, if, and also because they are in the Spirit, then they also walk by the Spirit. Because you are in the Spirit and walk also by the Spirit in Galatians, it's talking about that. So, so it's still possible to, to walk after the flesh or according to the flesh. And it's possible to have a carnal mindset, to, to think still like, a, like, like you did before. It's still there. And that, that's, that's why we, we use sometimes kind of feel the same thing because you still have the same mindset. It's not that you're not being a new creation, but it's because the way, the, the, the reason you still feel the way you did before, it's still that you feel the same temptation uh, that you did before. Maybe for many Christians, they, they can, or maybe new, new believers, they can they kind of feel that all this, this, this emotions and all this stuff kind of disappeared when they become a Christian. And I can really feel the new creation sometimes uh, in the beginning. But sometimes uh, further down the, down the way, they still have some part of the same mindset that they had before. And because they have some of the si same mindset they had before, they can still feel and do the same thing as they did before. They can still fall into that same temptation as they had before because, because their, their mind hasn't been renewed. They, they have come maybe forgotten who they were who they become when they become a Christians. And that's the reason why we sin, because we start to forget who we truly are. 
we forget our true identity. We, we fall for fall for the temp temptation of the devil because we forget who we truly are. And that's uh, as, as as again back to to Jesus. You know, he knew he he was he, that he was the Son of God. That's why he he was able to withstand the the devil in the desert because he knew who, who he was. And when we start to forget who we are, that's why they, 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 then the devil don't want you to hear this teaching I have for you now. That's why maybe you feel that you are, you are stirred up a little bit when you hear this teaching, because the devil doesn't want you to hear this truth. He don't want you to, to know who you truly are. And I am at resistance when I am t talking about these things. I am probably of all the teaching I had on the, you know, I have on the internet, I have on a region site, and I have been teaching the Bible on the internet for like 10, 10 15 years. And Actually, it's, it's closer to 15 years. Uh, I, you know, one of the teaching I have mo mostly met resistant in is actually this teaching here uh, about the new creation. Uh, because the enemy don't, doesn't want you to see this. He doesn't want you to see who you are. He will try to hinder you to see who you truly are. So even if you are a Christian, you can still walk like the mindset you had before. But it's about renewing your mind, that you haven't renewed your mind. You can still have a carnal mindset. You can have still have a fleshly mindset, a, a mindset that that is, that that exclude God, that uh, that God is not there in a way. When you have a fear, for instance, worries and fear and stuff like that, it's actually a carnal mindset. It's not doesn't mean that you are evil, but you still have that this mindset that God is not there, that God is, doesn't exist, that you that can can you really trust God? You know, you're starting to doubt if you really can trust God, and things like that, and that's a carnal mindset. So you can still have that, but it doesn't mean that you are in the flesh, in your sinful nature, or in the flesh, or something like that. So, so you can you can show, you can choose to do wrong, <laughs> and you can then think uh, to do sin, think and do sin after you, after you become a Christian, but it doesn't define who you truly are, who you truly have become. Then that you still fall into a sin or sin, something like that doesn't mean that your old nature is gone and, and everything is as before. <laughs> and, and you maybe you need to reborn, be born again, in a way, every time you fall in a sin. No. You still are, are a new creation, even though, even though we fall into sin. You still are new on the inside. Everything is new on the inside. You, you already now live in the spirit, and you even are in the spirit right now. Even if you fell into a sin uh, recently, or yesterday, or today, or to this morning, or, or something like that. And uh, because you don't lose your salvation when you s fall into a sin. The reason you sin because he, and he not didn't walk by the spirit, walk in the spirit, and by the spirit it was because you, you are still following your old programming from the old nature, the flesh, and the kingdom of darkness. But the truth is, you are no longer a sinner. You cannot be a new sinner and or a sinner and a new creation at the same time. Your identity was that you were a sinner, but now you are a new creation, and I'm righteous and clean right now, and that is my true new identity. So again, what what, what about the struggle in in Romans seven? And I already been been. Uh, I've been talking about this already, but but the struggle that we, we read about in Romans seven is not in the, it's not the, the, he's again he's talking about a person that live under the law. He he's talking he actually uh, talking about the, the experience a person will have when he's not born again when he's he's, he's under the law or or when he um, when when he's not in Christ. Because in Romans 8, 1, it says, those who are in Christ, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. So in Romans 7, he's talking about a person who is not really in Christ. He is, he is under the law. And you can still think that you are still are under the law. You can still think that Romans 7 is, is your true reality, but it's not your true reality. And, and the battle can be kind of a real for a Christian because they don't not see that his old nature is dead, that he is not under law anymore, <laughs> and that he you know are, is a Christian, is, is born again. And maybe some have taught you that you are still living in Romans seven, 
and therefore you also have to have to have to live in this reality that's that's the, your normal reality but it is it's not the real reality that that is for a newborn christian it's not the true reality because we live in a re reality where the spirit of where, where we have there is no condemnation you know if you live in this this reality that the good things i want to do that i don't do and the good and the bad things i want to do that i do that instead and and things like that you know that is not freedom that is that is that brings condemnation those things bring condemnation if you all the time try to do good things but you f fall fall into not doing them that will always bring condemnation it will always bring condemnation and you can still have a fleshly mind <laughs> and, and, and live in that reality. But that is not the reality God has called you to. He has called you to freedom. He has called you to freedom, to not to, to, be, uh, to, to be enslaved under the yoke of slavery again. Again, it's slavery again, on, and, and the yoke of slavery is it's of talking about the law. And Romans 7 is, is explaining that this is the way you live under the law. This is the, 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 your experience that, that you will experience under the law. But you are not there any longer. You don't live in Romans 7. You live in Romans 8 where there is no condemnation and the spirit of life, life and peace has come and, and, uh, and he has delivered you from the spirit of, of, of sin and death. You are, not, you are not there any longer. And so, so stand fast, therefore. That, that's the, that's the, the thing that Paul is saying. Stand, therefore, fa stand fast, therefore, in the liberty, in the freedom that Christ has made us free. It's for freedom that Christ has made us free. And this is what the Galatians 5 is, is about. And it is, that is what, what this, this seminar is about. That's, it's about freedom. It's about freedom. <laughs> uh, I kind of remember Braveheart, you know, he says, freedom! <laughs> uh, and it's about freedom. It is. It is about freedom. God, for Christ has set us free. And that's the thing that all of us, we are longing for that freedom. But to put yourself under law, to put yourself under Romans 7, it's, uh, it's, it's not freedom. It's bondage. It's condemnation. It brings condemnation. And we are not living there in condemnation. We, we are living in, in, in the true reality of Romans 8, where there is no condemnation. We, we, are, in, we are in the Spirit. We are lived by the Spirit. So, so if we are in the Spirit, then let us live by the Spirit. Don't put us, let, let us put us under law and sin and all of these things any longer. We, are free to, free, we have been freed from those things. We don't need to live in that, uh, that thing any longer. You know, in the early two, 2000, there was a trilogy. Uh, it was like a movie trilogy. Uh, called The Matrix. I don't know if you are familiar with these films. Uh, but this film describes two realities. One of the realities might seem like the true reality, but it was not the true and real reality. Uh, and Matrix is, is kind of about uh, people that have been slaves to, to an artificial intelligent, intelligence. People are in coma and, and, and they are connected to kind of machines that send signals to the brain and these signals create false reality, false brain patterns or false way of thinking. It, it creates a false reality. And, uh, and uh, those who are connected to that computer that don't see, that they kind of see that their reality as real. And this is the kind of the matrix. And uh, those who are connected to, the, to it also, they don't know that they are in a matrix but they are actually in a false reality. Oh, and then there are some good pictures to draw out from this, this movie. I, I, I like this movie. Actually, the first part, the first, first part of this movie, I, I like, especially. Uh, now, I'm not saying that, uh, that uh, Matrix is a Christian film. Uh, you can also fin, uh, find a lot of uh, non-Christian philosophy in there too, like Buddhism and, and things like that. But, but um, I think anyway, it, it gives some it gives some good pictures actually that we can. There are some good pictures in there that we can draw out from this movie. And movies too, I, I believe it is. It's the nowadays uh, kind of the parables for uh, for the for today in a way. Uh, and and it kind of it kind of shows you know that, that it kind of shows that maybe we have been programmed wrong you know that there is maybe another reality that that is out there that is is the true reality. Maybe we have only been fooled. And there's many Christians who have been fooled to believe that there is a Romans 7 reality. When, when, when we truly actually are living in Romans 8. 
But it's also this picture also give, gives on a, a picture of that there is an enemy out there who, who wants to try to, to lie to us and say that we have no power to overcome him. And through the film, you, you can see that there is there's this, 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 you know, uh, what is his name again? Uh, Agent Smith, you know, he, he's always saying that, you know, he kind of in, in intimidate, uh, you know, the, this, this other people in, in the film, especially, especially um, Neo. Uh, and then say you know say say negative things. No, you cannot overcome this. You know he he's kind of the picture of, of the evil, this Agent Smith. So it's kind of a, a, an Im image that tells us that we cannot overcome him. You know, but when we when we start to believe and see like the end of the Matrix uh, Part One, uh, who really who we are, <laughs> who, when he, when he started to uh, with the Neo started to understand who he, he really was. He was actually actually able to defeat the enemy when he started to understand who he was. When he started to understand who re re reality that he belonged to, that was the first part too. But he also started to understand who he was. And some some people say that that uh, Neo kind of was uh, a picture of of Christ in a way. But I, I think it's more a picture of who we are in a way, who we are in Christ. That we start to discover who we truly are. Uh, and when we start to discover who we truly are, we will win victory over the enemy. And, um, and, and, and then also when we start to understand which reality we belong to. And you've just been fooled. You've been fooled to believe in a Roman 7 reality. Where you're where you always having this circle where you sin and you try not to sin and you sin and you try not to sin. And it's always lead to condemnation. And, and you, you go around and around in, in, in this thing. But that, that is not true, your true reality. And that's the good news. And I, I like the I like the end of the Matrix uh, uh, very well. And and uh, and then there's a scene in the end of this this movie uh, where Neo or uh, the the actor is uh, is Keanu Reeves, and he takes the the fight against this Agent Smith. And then Morpheus Morpheus says, uh, believes that uh, says, he believes that Neo actually is, is kind of the chosen one. Um, and, and, and the chosen one who will save them. And he, he begins to, to believe. He begins to believe. He says that. He begins to believe. He begins to believe who he is. <laughs> He's starting to believe who he is. You know, sometimes I think, think, think Jesus and God is sitting in heaven and, and looking down at us and, 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 and looking at, at, at you. And he's starting to believe. He's starting to believe who he is. <laughs> he was starting to believe who he is in, in us. And I, I think he's, he's standing there with, with, with eagerness, you know. And now he's starting to, to get it. Now he's starting to believe who he is. And then, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and then you have to just go on, you know. And he encouraged us to just, just to find out who you are. Find out who you truly are. And, then, and you see the seals in this film that Neo gets, gets, gets on. Uh, he started to discover who he is. And uh, towards the end of the film, actually, uh, Agent Smith, he, he was managed to actually to kill Neo. But after Trianity, so I say kind of how much, you know, and there's a love in here too, you know. And, 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 and when Trian Trinity, uh, this, uh, this other uh, character in this film, uh, says how much she loves Neo, and he must not die in a way, he arises again. <laughs> and, and this time, Neo really now who he is when he rise, when he died when his old self died uh, and uh, and he uh, and he rose up again he started to, he really stood, understood who he was and and even this is a good picture you know when when because because of God loves loved us he revived us from death we died with him but but because of his love we also ro rose with him and we are walking with him and when we start to understand that then we really really understand our true identity in Christ. When we understand that we are there, died, and by the love of God we have been raised up again, we, we understand, we started to understand our true identity in Christ. And when we see our true identity, there is nothing that can, nothing that can come our way that we cannot conquer, that we are more than conquer. We, need to, we, we can see that we are more than conquerors. Romans 8 talks about that too. And there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. No death, no life, no nothing, no human being, no nothing. If, uh, if I go through difficulties, or uh, there's nothing that can truly separate me from the love of God. And, and in him we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. 
So, so, uh, so, so, so when we start to see the truth, when we start to see the true, true reality, the true reality that we are living in, that we are living in a reality of freedom, we are not living in a reality of bondage, we are living in the reality of freedom. And, uh, and when we see that, uh, we also we, we, we can withstand anything that comes our way. When we know our true identity, when we know who we are in Christ, we, we, there is nothing that can hinder us to, to go the way that God has called us to go. And you can also see, you know, that this the, the, this Neo, he he was kind of a hacker. He he didn't see his true reality, he, or it's his true identity, who who he was. He he, he kind of he even even had a different name, but his his, his real name was actually Thomas E. Anderson. Uh, I would just re recommend a book to uh, I call it's it's called. Um, uh, called uh, from it's, it's, a, it's from a writer called uh, Greg Boyd, and it's a it's a book named called Escaping the Matrix. So in in, in this, this teaching, I just wanted to to mention that book because he also talks about these things in a very good way. So, but but God God has called you to live in freedom. So when you when you become a Christian, you you actually are being freed from this this matrix, this this old kingdom. And you are put into a new kingdom. If you are released from this kingdom of darkness, and you are being translated into His kingdom of light, and this is now your true reality. But but the enemy still want you want you to be connected to mat to the matrix. He will still think that you are still living in the matrix. <laughs> he will still try to to may may make you think that you are still living in Romans seven reality, and he's lying to you. He's just lying to you and said that you live there. But that is not the true you, and that is not the true reality that you are living in. The, the truth is that you are you are you are you were in this kingdom of darkness, but now you are being translated into the kingdom of His dear Son. And and that's the truth about you. That's the truth about your new, new reality. So you are being set free from the law of sin and death. You are no longer in the flesh either, but in the spirit. You have become a new creation, and you are in the spirit. You are in Christ, and then Paul is using a lot of that that sentence in Christ. There is in Christ, there is no condemnation. In in Jesus Christ, um, the, all all those who who belongs to Christ and so on. You are in Christ. You belong to Christ. That is your true reality. You are called to freedom, not to slavery, to bound again to fear. So uh, Romans eight one to two. Let's read it, read it here. There is, there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. He has made me free from the law of sin and death, which is described in Romans 7. And in Romans 8, 9, But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the, the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. So, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Romans 8, 15. For you, you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. Some, some people, when they read Romans, they, they go still into fear, doing bondage to fear. They think that they are not pleasing to God and stuff like that. But it says that for, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father, my daddy, my papa, my daddy. And in, in Galatians 5, 1 again, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty which Christ has made us free. For, for, Christ, for, for it's for freedom Christ has made us free. And do not be entangled again with the yoke of, a yoke of bondage. So, when, when all this is said, if you are a new creation, and we no longer have a sinful nature, and we live in a new kingdom, why do we then sin? But there is two things that will affect you. That is your oral programming from, from your sinful nature, the flesh, and the power called sin. And we will also talk about a power called power called sin. So, but I will first in the next session of this teaching, uh, I will I will try to, to to explain a little bit about the program from the old nature called the flesh. And remember, I defined the flesh in this way in this context. It's one way of thinking and acting uh, that are distinct and from, from the divine influence and things and thoughts that opposes God and his truth and divine nature. Or you can say 
think and act if God this did not exist. So you can also say that the flesh is, is the way, way the sin nature, as I said, sin nature is thinking, feeling and acting. But remember that the sin nature or the flesh is not you, it's not truly you any longer. It is just, it's, it's just something that has programmed you. So um, this is the this end of this, this session. So, and, and, and come back and, and, uh, and also get the next session where I've been talking about that we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of, of his dear son and into the kingdom of light. And I was talking about these two kingdoms a little bit more. So, uh, so come back and, and also listen to the next sessions of this teaching. God bless you.